All right, it is autocross week. It is day one. It is travel and check-in day. We'll go over a few things on the car first, get it loaded up, and we will hit the road, so stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. It is finally time to go to autocross week. As you can see, we're still in my shop at the moment, but we are gonna be loading the car up and driving up to Pittsburgh or just north of Pittsburgh. But let's take a look over the car of kind of how I kind of got everything set up at the moment. Uh, the car has kind of given me a little bit of problems this week, uh, which has definitely raised my uh, stress level. I'm feeling pretty stressed about this trip. Uh, I'm hoping that everything goes well. The car is not 100%, but I think, it, I think it's gonna be okay. So during this week, uh, I thought it would be fun to just do a little bit of uh, suspension changes on the car. That turned out to be a bad idea. And uh, the suspension tubes that are on the, the rear of the lower control arm, uh, one of them got cross-threaded and did kind of locked up. Uh, I was able to get it out and I was able to clean it up with a tap and kind of put it all back in. But I do have some spares. They were just had to wait on them to come in. Uh, not great on their shipping. So these threads were already kind of messed up. I had to uh, clean them up a little bit. It'd be nice if, you know, they had some protective on these threads. Uh, I know when I was getting the a lot of the suspension stuff, there were other rod ends that the threads weren't protected and I had to clean them up. So yeah, shame on the companies for shipping and things like that. Like, so this is uh, a proper way to do it. I mean, it's in a bag for one, but it's got the thread protector on there. So that's how uh, things should be uh, sent. Not with like this with the threads kind of sticking out, but I got it cleaned up enough, I think for it to work on the car. Got plenty of thread engagement, uh, but I do have an extra that I am going to pack up into the car and uh, bring with me. I don't think I'm gonna need it, but we'll have it just in case. So let's take a look inside the car real quick. So inside here, we'll have a few different things than what we normally have. So for one, I have the rear view mirror back in here. Uh, so that will be nice. I am able to see over top of the, the rear spoiler enough to see cars. I like using a rear view mirror when I'm driving. Uh, I don't like to rely just on the side mirrors. I really like the rear view mirror. So that is in there. It is kind of weird driving the car and that being there because I'm just used to a clear view on the, the windscreen, but it's it'll be there. It's needed for the, the driving that we need to do for all across week. And then I also have this uh, fan mounted up here. So this is just a battery operated fan to help keep me cool if, uh, if it gets a little hot. And this will just be nice going forward for the, the hot summer days that we have here in uh, Virginia. Hopefully, I mean, I think it should blow enough air. Uh, also have uh, a speaker in here. I don't have it in here at the moment, but I'll have a little uh, Bluetooth speaker so I can listen to some tunes as I'm driving because I don't have a radio in here. Uh, we do have the horn set up in here that we saw in the previous episodes. Uh, also the engine fan, it's uh, working for the most part. So I took the car for a drive just to verify that everything was working as it should. Um, and the drive went fairly well. There is some tuning things that we need to get figured out. So I got some data logs and got those sent off. Uh, but the engine fan turned on, except for when I got back to the house, uh, right when I went to shut off, the car overheated. And there was some weird measurements going on from the, the coolant sensor to the ECU was not kind of lining up with the, the dash. The dash was showing that it was starting to get hot and the ECU said that it was good. Uh, so I think it maybe had turned the fan speed down maybe or something. I don't really know. I shut it off and then turned power back on and everything seemed to be okay and the fan turned on and cooled things down. But that is something that we're gonna have to uh, kind of keep an eye on during this week. Uh, I know in the, the engine 
fan video I had mentioned about uh, possibly putting a switch onto that low speed. Kind of wish that I did that, uh, but we'll see if we need to do anything. I'm hoping that it's going to be okay. So that is all in there. And then back in the trunk of the vehicle. So I have a lot of stuff crammed back in here. So we got all of our tools that we'll need. We got coolers where I'll have one for food, one for drinks. We got a jack. And then up in here, I got some crates. So these are easy to just pull out of the car and I don't, don't have to pull out individual stuff. So I am just able to pull the whole crate out, put it all back in. So in that one, we got the, the tire pressure gauge. We got some jack stands, uh, maybe a few other things. In this one, we got fluids, paper towels, some rags, and other things like that. And then we got a jump box. So I'm hoping that we're not gonna need, you know, any of this stuff. Well, obviously the stuff in the course, but hopefully all the other stuff we won't really be uh, needing. But, you know, they say if you bring it, you won't need it. If you don't bring it, you will need it. So I've tried to bring kind of as much as I can. Uh, other than really spare parts, I don't really know what spare parts I should even be bringing uh, for this trip or for the car. Um, so that I'm not really going to to worry about at the moment. Might think of a few things. Uh, oh yeah, I did get a new new battery this week because the other one, why it could start the car, it was just not holding a charge. So I wanted to be completely confident in the car so we did get a new battery even though I wanted to do one of the, like the anti-gravities or something of something smaller but just timing and cost so uh, we just went with another standard battery so we're at least uh, good there all right now I'm going to get the car all loaded up and we will hit the road and drive eight hours up to Pittsburgh let's get going If you're not familiar with the car, here we go. So it's a 1994 Mustang, still has the five liter in there, a little worked over. Uh, double wishbone SLA front suspension, torque arm rear suspension, semi gutted out interior, cleaned up, kind of looks good. The car is pretty well sorted. It gets down, uh, but still kind of a, I don't think it's over to the top build, but not your uh, typical basic build. All right, wrapping up day number one, we made it through tech, which wasn't really too much of an issue. Didn't have any uh, concerns there. Uh, walked the course a little bit. We got all this room for activities. And tons of room. This course is looking like it's gonna be uh, pretty quick so far there's not a lot of obstacles like that i'm kind of used to this is going to be a really uh point and shoot kind of course which kind of not surprised by it since there is majority of uh muscle cars here but yeah so far this course is looking pretty quick and just look at this you come around this cone here and then you got a gate right there and then you got to turn, but that is all straight. It's going to be really quick. Should be a lot of fun. 
What was really fun is Summit Racing paid for us to do some karting. So we all, like 50 some of us, went out and did uh, some karting here at the track, the local track that they have here. So 12 at a time went out and uh, did as fast as laps as we could. And then they ended up doing a feature race. So the top four of each of those sets, which turned into 16 drivers, uh, then got to do a feature race, like a wheel to wheel race, where we all started um, on the, the main straight in a row and then went out and you're going for position. Time doesn't matter. So it's kind of like a, a Formula One race in that regard that you're just going for time. If you have the fastest lap and you're not in first, too bad. Uh, so, your boy made it into that. So I was fourth fastest in my heat, which then put me all the way down to 16th uh, on the grid. So just barely made it. I think I had like an 81 uh, point something where the fastest time was uh, 78. So a little bit off the pace, but definitely made up for it in the, the feature race, which was a ton of fun. Uh, I did like spin like on the very first lap which then i had to make up some ground which i didn't so from the start starting the 16th i did pass some people right on the get-go got a good run into turn one passed some people but then on like turn two or three it kind of spun out and uh, because of people breaking and things like that uh, but made up some time uh passed a whole bunch of people it was a 20 minute race uh somewhere and maybe 10 minutes in or something like that got a little greedy going on the outside of somebody and went off into the grass spun around got beached had to have the person come over and push me out which by that time a lot of cars had passed me i looked at like the the guy that i was racing what number and he finished seventh so i was at least shooting for seventh place uh, but I ended up finishing 13th out of 16, so not dead last, which is okay. Um, after have, watching all this, because I was beached for like two minutes or something like that, all these cars went past me. But I ended up being the fourth fastest on track. I got a 78.3, so I picked up a lot of time from when uh, I ran earlier, like three seconds, which is crazy to find that pace on there. It's just uh, a lot of you know flat out lifting you know sliding the car it, ton of fun highly recommended I get to channel my inner formula one uh person you know like oh that little skid there cost me some, some time if i lift here don't lift here flat out it was just tons of fun really really enjoyed that so that was awesome for summit racing to do that for us uh i've walked the course it's looking super super quick i think uh, so we will see how we stack up. Um, not really sure all the cars that are in my class. I'll have a better idea tomorrow. Um, not sure if I'll be able to pull out a win, but I, I, I know we are going to be competitive. That is, that's a fact. Um, but if we're going for that top time, I, or top time in group, I'm not top time for the event. I, I know that I can't compete with uh, some of these other boosted cars, all wheel drive things that are out here, but uh, I think we'll definitely be able to be up there, um, especially in class. So looking forward to that. Uh, but that is all for day one. Day one is uh, pretty much over. Got my tent set up, gonna go get some shut eye. Day number two, Coming up, racing at Pittsburgh International or Pitt International uh, Raceway. Um, so that is coming up. Hopefully that goes well and then we can drive to the, the next event after that. So hopefully one of the next videos isn't like, oh no, I've broken down on the side of the road and my autocross week is over. Hopefully that is not a video that is uh, that I have to make. So hopefully everything goes well. I'm confident in the autocross less confident in the the driving in between events uh so we will kind of see it's confident in the mechanicals of the car 
uh, the engine is just the, the kind of the concern. The, the tune is getting there, but it's still a work in progress for the, the drivability, partial throttle stuff. Um, and that's partly on some changes that I've made with like engine van and um, sensors and things like that, but also just trying to just get things dialed in. It's a uh, non, you know, uh, common engine setup that I have going on. So, but that is all for now. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you in the next one. Day two coming up autocross week.